What up, gang? It's Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zika Milligan, and Villain and Trilligan, and we are back on Fate Stay Night Remastered. Uh, last episode, Rent. Hold on, shit. Hold on, beat. Ren summoned uh, Archer. I think it was him. Archer. Yeah, Ren summoned Archer, and used one of the command spells to make him uh, uh, uh obey her and uh, obey her completely. And I, I think now, I think now, um, the Holy Grail War is gonna be starting up soon. So let's get into it. The Holy Grail War. It's a grand ritual that's been repeated for hundreds of years. A fight to the death between seven participants, of which only one can survive. It's said that a Holy Grail exists in a land of Fuyuki, and that a number of mages fought over it in the past. The one and only objective was to obtain the relic called the Holy Grail. However, the Grail's origins are unclear. We're sure it isn't we're sure it isn't a chalice that held the blood of God, but its power is fearsome enough to be compared to, to the genuine article. That's right. They say the Holy Grail can grant any wish. Only one person can possess it. The Holy Grail can only grant one wish for one person. Despite that, seven mages are needed to are needed to summon this grail to this land. Seven collaborators to create one miracle. So as you might imagine, it was only a matter of time before they started fighting over the grail. Like so many conflicts, it started as a competition over property rights. The seven mages equally used the power of the holy grail to summon their respective familiars, then do battle over the grail itself. Only one mage can obtain the grail. As a result, seven people who started as colleagues ended up in a ferocious battle to the death. That's the gist of the ritual known as the Holy Grail War, a struggle for ownership between mages. The mages chosen by the Holy Grail are called masters, who use the blessing of the Grail to, to acquire powerful familiars known as servants. Kind of fast, I wasn't able to catch all that. Two things serve as proof that one has become a master. The summoning and command of a servant, and the mark of command spells to compel the servant's servitude. The first goes without saying. The archer I summoned yesterday, no, a few hours ago to be exact, is Rin Tosaka's servant. As for the second, a master must closely guard the command spells that control one's servant. This is probably the most critical aspect of being a master. When I summoned archer, symbols appeared on my right hand namely command spells, stigmata bestowed by the holy grail upon the summoning of a servant that mark one's new status as a master. A massive amount of magical energy is compressed into these seals, whose power is fleeting rather than long-lasting. They disappear once they're used, and as their shape suggests, each mark represents a single use. In other words, one only gets three shots. A master who has used up all three command spells can no longer control a servant, and is as good as dead. Damn! So like, if you use up all of them, the servant is legit just not your servant no more. That's fucked. You better keep them shits, don't waste them. Therefore, command spells must be handled with care until the very end, since they're as valuable as one's own life. It pains me to no end that I burn one right off the bat, but it wasn't a total waste, so I'll chalk it up as a win. Yeah, we got that nigga cleaning our fucking living room. He really fucked up my living room. That's still pissing me off. I can just imagine if some fucking black nigga fell through my damn roof and fucked up my living room. Then had the nerve to talk crazy to me. After all, a servant can turn on his master at any time. If one command spell is what it takes to put a collar on him, and I consider it a fair trade. That's about it for the broader strokes of this business. Once seven servants have been summoned, seven servants summoned, seven ser seven ser seven servants summoned. Once seven servants have been summoned, the Holy Grail War will begin. Tonight's sleep will be a fitful one. I don't know what that means. I don't know when the final master will appear, but they could be right around the corner. Um, is it morning already? I feel sluggish. 
My bleary gaze goes up to the window only to see that it's already bright outside. It's after nine? Oh, this doesn't even count as being tardy. After a drowsy check of the clock, I make up my mind to skip school today. Real shit. Uh, body's heavy. Feels like that business almost mostly drained me. Sitting up in my bed, I heave alongside. Damn. Shit. Fuck. Shit. I done some in a servant. You finna go and serve it. Your niggas too perfect. Said nigga, I'm perfect. Uh, I'm just perfect. Fly. I'm the perfect guy. Finna hit you in your eye. If you think you hard, nigga. But you not like a bard Cause you don't make that good music Nigga like me use it A nigga like me finna go do it Logic ass bars Logic ass bars Not being a morning person isn't enough to explain why I feel so dull I think Archer mentioned something about it A master would be out of commission after summoning a servant That's right I summon Archer not Saber. Damn, you still pissed about that? I remember it all clearly now. I'd rather not, to be honest, but it's not as if denying the facts will let me do it over again. It'll take a day or two to recover my power. I'll just treat today like a breaking period. I drag myself out of bed. A mental boxing match rages between the outside air, which is quite warm for winter, and the comfort of my bed sheets. It concludes in a three second knockout against the temptation of going back to sleep. I check my body in the mirror. Nothing out of place aside from the loss of half my usual magical energy. <laughs> now that it's a problem, I review the situation. I summon the servant archer, who doesn't have an ounce of respect for his master. To make matters worse, he don't even know who the fuck he is. Wow, talk about a damn headache. <laughs> I guess that means his trump card is off the table until his memories come back. Can't expect him to use a power he doesn't even remember. Servants are strong familiars all on their own, but what makes them truly formidable is a secret weapon they each possess. Frustratingly, Archer claims to have forgotten what his is. It's my fault he's in this state, so we'll just have to make it work. We're both in the same boat then. I can only pray that he'll sort his memories out. Who knows how long that might take? Yada yada. I really got my work cut out for. Whoa! I might have to reevaluate my opinion of him. The parlor is completely back to normal. Shit, it looks better, doesn't it? I thought he'd maybe just clear away some of the debris. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's debris. But the room is so spotless, I can't help but be impressed. He must have felt bad for wrecking the place. I doubt it would have gone to the gone to the trouble otherwise. Guess I ought to commend him. Still taking your sweet time, I see. Need I remind you that we're wasting daylight? I retract my statement. This nigga's pissing me off again. There isn't a remorseful bone in his body. Good morning. You seem to have made yourself right at home. I did spend the night after all. Oh, I took the occasion to tidy up the kitchen. I expected it to be inadequate, but it's rather thoughtfully furnished. Quite well kept for a girl living alone in a mansion. I have a headache. Why do I have to put up with the ser- Shut the fuck up while I'm talking, nigga, damn! Why do I have to put up with a servant judging my interior de de decoration? I thought servants all- I thought servants all cared of only about fighting. Are we sure this guy isn't effective? I see. You aren't in, a, in your best condition. You were so feisty last night, but the fatigue must have caught up with you. I'll pour you some tea. I hope Black is fine. Acting like he owns the place. Without missing a beat, Archer produces a teacup and fills it with the expensive reddish tea he's been brewing. There's a lot I want to say right now, but oddly enough, I can't work out the in in dick in dick in dick in dick indignation to. The way he does it all is so refined. 
I've got to admit that he might be rather cultured. Fine, I am pretty exhausted, so I'll have some. I just realized I haven't ate today. That's a terrible idea. I sit down on the chair. The teacup is placed soundlessly in front of me. I take a sip. Oh, it's delicious. I expected as much as my favorite Chinese tea, a spring harvest hong cha. I'd be upset if it didn't taste good. On that note, I'd normally be upset if someone used my favorite tea leaf without asking. Hmm. It makes me mad, but the tea was brewed so exquisitely that the pleasure it brings overcomes my anger. Hmm. <laughs> Fuck you laughing for? Hey, what's so funny? Well, I was gonna ask how you like it, but your face tells me enough. I set the teacup down with a forceful thud. Oh, what a waste. You should enjoy it while it's still hot. I can leave if I'm spoiling the mood. No need. Thanks for the tea. I didn't become a master to be a tea snob, but I didn't ask you to do that either. I see. I agree. I didn't make a contract with you to be your tea brewer. I'll show more restraint in the future if that's what you want. Yeah, you're only here to be a combat familiar. I've never heard of a servant that does household chores, nor do I particularly need one. Are you sure? I'd use that shit to my fucking... I'd use that shit to the best of the capabilities. This nigga gonna be doing the dishes, he gonna be sweeping, he gonna be mopping, he gonna be cooking. Nigga, you gonna be a butler. Interpret... What do you mean by particularly? Interpret that however you want. More importantly, do you remember who you are yet? Damn, my fault? Shit, I ain't about to whoop my ass. Archer shakes his head in the negative. That doesn't bode well. If he can't remember after a single night, then his memories probably won't return easily. There are some measures I can try today, but... Alright, I'll think of some solutions for your memory issue. For now, get ready to head out, Archer. You probably don't know the lay of the land yet, do you? I'll give you a tour of the city. Get ready? There's no need for that, surely. If we're leaving, we should go right now. Do you plan to walk around town in that outfit? Anyone can see that you aren't a normal person. And if another master spots you, they'll know you're a servant right away. The fit is hard as fuck, but come on, you gotta dumb it down a bit. I don't plan on announcing our presence to the world. You're a little too extravagant looking right now, man. Ah, so that's your concern. There's no problem. While I need to change clothes to blend in, that's only while I'm materialized. Servants are fundamentally spiritual beings. When we're out of combat, I can take on an incorporable state to reduce the burden on my master. Mmm, that's what makes you a heroic spirit. You need your master's magical energy to form a body, so if I cut that supply, we naturally return to spirit form. In this state, servants are more like guardian angels. We can only be observed by masters connected to the ley line. Of course, we're still capable of conversation or reconnaissance. Ooh, that's handy. That would make it really hard for other masters to locate you. Yes, but just as mages can sense other mages, servants can sense other servants. A servant who is skilled in magecraft may even be able to locate other servants from afar. Archer has it in one. Masters are supposed to be capable mages. And the more magical energy the mage has, the better they are detecting traces of magical energy. As far as I know, however, there isn't anyone else with around with that degree of power. So what about you? Can you tell where the other servants are? Master. Master, have you forgotten which class I am? Do you expect a knight to be able to scry far away enemies? He has a point, shit. Archer's magical energy isn't on that level. It's likely that the only magical powerful, the, ma the, only, the only the magically powerful caster is capable of easily locating distant foes. Look, I don't know about the caster in State Night, but the caster in Zero, bro, fuck that nigga. I hate him. He ugly as shit, too. 
Fine. Then follow me, Archer. I'll show you the world you've been summoned to. I doubt it'll be particularly new to me. Moreover, Master, haven't you forgotten something important? Huh? Something important? My goodness. You really aren't on top of your game. We still haven't exchanged the most critical point of our contract. Most critical point. Is he demanding equivalent exchange? I can't give you my liver. No, that can't be it. The chance to take part in the Holy Grail is already reward enough for a servant. There shouldn't be anything. Wow, you really, you really are in a morning person. Archer sounds exasperated. His oh-so-sardonic manner of speech finally gives me an idea. Come to think of it, he's never once called me by my name. Oh, shit! My name! Finally caught up, are we? I suppose it isn't too late. So, Master, what is your name? What shall I call you? Archer sounds sulky. Oh, man. He really is a decent person. I'm sure of it now. After all, there's no tangible benefit to exchanging names. Servants are forcefully bound by to their masters by the command spells. While names are a key to contract with the regular familiar, there's no need for a master and servant to be so intimate. But it's important to Archer. He's clearly trying to establish trust between comrades in arms, regardless of the command spells. I'm Ren Tosaka. You can call me whatever you want. I answer in a clipped tone, unwilling to let slip any admiration. He probably, he'll probably just call me something impersonal like Master or Hey You, which works out just fine for me. Except... Archer chews on Rin Tosaka for a moment. Then Rin. Yes, I like the sound of that. Suits you very well. He says something really forward. What's wrong, Rin? You look unwell. Shut up! Oh, I'm leaving, Archer! I can't do that soon, Dere shit. This is no time to be sitting around. <laughs> Stop, nigga. I turn on my heel and storm away, huffing and puffing and blowing the house down. This is so infuriating, I'm not even sure why. Ah, oh, fuck my eyes. I need blue light glasses. I really need blue light glasses. Oh, man. Yesterday, like, I was on my computer all fucking day yesterday, and it, like, really fucked with my eyes, like, I went, like, when I went to bed, like, I had to, like, cover up, I had to put, like, five covers over my face when I went to bed to make it completely dark, because my eyes was just so fucking, like, just in pain, my eyes was so fucked, so infuriating, I'm not even sure why, damn that Archer, did he say that just to mess with me? I bet he did. Definitely sounds like something he'd do. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. Must be all part of his plan to get me all flustered. I better be careful. Gotta work with this wise guy from here on out. The wise guy. You are the fucking delusional. I take Archer outside. Fuyuki City, my hometown, is broadly divided into two halves. There's Miyama, which is left over from the village the city grew out of, and Shinto, the developing modern region across the river. My house is in Miyama, the old part. Miyama is split, is itself is split into two areas. The European style neighborhoods, originally inhabited by immigrants from abroad, and the old Japanese style houses, set against a mountainous backdrop. Both areas are situated on Hellcast along the outskirts of town. The street dividing the two residential areas is fairly normal by comparison. How normal, you ask? This normal is literally a street. This is the crossroads of Miyama. On one side lies the road going up the hill to the European neighborhoods where I live. Opposite, it is the road to the Japanese houses. Where my school and shopping areas are. Oh, okay, opposite. Opposite is the road leading to the Japanese house. Fuck! Path leading to Shinto, where my school and shopping areas are, as well as Ryodo Temple in the mountains.
we come to the bridge connecting Shinto and Miyama. Years ago, a big train station went up in Shinto, bringing with it frenzied urbanization. They may belong to the same mun municipality, but Miyama and Shinto couldn't be more different. The name Fuyuki, written with the kanji for winter tree, is supposedly inspired by the long winters here, which by the by are pretty long. Despite that, temperatures are warm. February here is only about as cold as the very start of winter elsewhere. I bet if you randomly started digging, you'd turn up a hot spring or two. Though of course our temperate weather disqualifies this town as a hot spring resort location. We've got an odd climate where the mild winters suddenly turn to springtime, Bloom come April. This is what Shinto looks like. A number of tall buildings have been erect, as if in a hurry, given <laughs> erect, erect, as if it, erect, er, erect, as if in a hurry, giving the hastily developed city a distinctly artificial feel. Erect. It all happened. In a Someone built a bunch of glass and metal buildings on the depopulated land. Oh man, I'm getting hungry now. I should have ate before I started recording. What do I want to eat? And here is the center of it all. This is Shinto's park. What are your thoughts now that we've been to all the key spots? I asked Archer who's next to me. Of course he's invisible. It's a big park. Is there any reason why nobody's here? Feels that way, doesn't it? There's a story behind it, actually. I look over to the park. You'd think that a wide open space like this would have children playing in it, even on a weekday. But instead, there are only a handful of people. The place feels dull and lifeless. It was 10 years ago. Apparently, there was a big fire that burned for an entire day and only went out once it rained. Although the town was rebuilt, this place stayed basically the same. The burnt meadow eventually got turned into a park. Archer says nothing. But I can tell he sensed something odd, even if I couldn't see him. Notice, have you? That's right. This is where the last battle of the previous Holy Grail War was fought. It all ended here. I see. So that's why there are so many... Grudges here. Huh? You can tell? Servants are spirits first. Our very existence is similar to grudges or obsessions. That makes us sensitive to lingering emotions such as these. There were other areas around town that felt dense with such a feeling, but this is on a different level. From our point of view, it's almost like a reality marble. Tosaka mutters under her breath. Archer's inflectionless voice mentions an unusual bit of magical jargon. Innate bounded fields, mages call them reality marbles. Reality marbles are considered one of the apexes of magecraft. They're said to be infinitely close to true magic. For the last few centuries, bounded fields have served as mages defensive barriers. To put it in simple terms, they're like a home security system with real teeth. Bounded fields are conventionally erected on a piece of land or a building to guard us against outside threats. They're merely an alteration of an area that already exists. Reality marbles, however, are something else entirely. You can think of them as a space that consumes reality itself. When a mage materializes their imaginary world, a representation of their mind, and overwrites their real world in it, real world with it, we call the resulting field a reality marble. It's a large area magecraft that a large area magecraft that twists, no, rebuilds the world according to the mage's wishes. Rin, is something on your mind? Huh? No, I was just a little surprised. I didn't expect to hear the words reality marble from an archer. Is it so strange that I know it? Well, yeah, to mages, reality marbles are a taboo among taboo. Some of the most esoteric arts out there. Doesn't make sense that an archer would know what they are. I shoot a quizzical gaze in his general direction. 
In reply, I feel an incorporable sigh. Rin. The word hero implies someone familiar with both martial and magical arts. You're free to assume that your archer only knows how to use a bow. But I hope you don't hold the same illusions about the other servants. Oh, shit. That does make sense when he puts it like that. Okay, I get it. I didn't think that through, and I'll be more careful next time. Is that good enough for you? Rin. Let me be blunt. You are certainly talented, but that makes you tend to underestimate other people. You should break that habit before you become an adult. You really don't know when to stop, you know that? Break my habit? He's talking about me like some unruly racehorse. Oh, forgive me. I didn't mean to suggest you're a horse, but it did feel like an appropriate choice of words. Hey, that's just as bad. Oh, shit. What the fuck? My right hand suddenly flares with pain. Rin. Quiet down for a second, Archer. The command spells on my right hand hurt. They're throbbing. Almost like a dull alarm warning their owner. Someone's watching us. I scan my surroundings. I mentally weave a detection web and cast it out over the park. I can't find them. Any luck, Archer? Doesn't look like it. I can't even sense them spying on us. Which means it's a master. I don't know who it is, but if Archer can't tell, then it must be a master. We don't have all seven yet, but the fighting could still start at any time. Maybe whoever's watching me is up for an early skirmish. Command spells react to other command spells. If we're dealing with a master, then you should be able to identify them if we come across them. Would they be able to do the same to you? Yeah, but advanced spellcasters can hide their energy signatures. I can mass them and react to each other, but it still takes magical energy to activate them. As long as the master keeps their magic circuits shut, it'll be hard to find them. That's troubling. Does that mean we're broadcasting our position? Pretty much. If I looked around at home, I'm sure I could dig up a way to match my power, but... You don't need to? Yep, they'll just come to us first, right? Saves us the trouble of looking. Archer doesn't respond. Maybe he's irritated with me. What, you gonna tell me not to get cocky? I ask a little defensive, thinking of our earlier exchanges. Archer, Archer mentally brushes the question aside. You're at your best when you're like this. Yes. Let the small fry come to us. I can feel the smirk in his tone. I'm not saying I like what he said, but it is enough of a knowledge branch, I suppose. We start walking around town again. I spent the day taking her to all the important places and even dropped by some less significant spots that might be useful to know. After dinner, I make our final stop. It's now seven in the evening. This is a good chance to show him the best vantage point in the city. That's trippy, that's trippy, that's trippy, that's trippy. The wind howls. We're atop the tallest building in Shinto. The commanding view of the city makes for a fitting end to our tour. So? Pretty great view, isn't it, Archer? I feel sorry for any future boyfriends. You really know how to run a guy ragged. The fuck did you say to me, Archer? Just an honest thought. It is a good position, though. If you'd taken me here first, it would have spared you all the effort. It would have spared you the effort of all that walking. What are you talking about? It's nice, sure, but you need to visit places to really get a lay of the land. This only gives you a bird eye view of the city. Not necessarily. You think a little. You think too little. Of the archer class. One can be a good bowman without good eyes. Really. Can you see my house from here then? Not quite that far. Just to the bridge or so. I can count the little I can count the number of tiles there at least. No way, the tiles on the bridge? I didn't expect his vision to be as good as the telescopes I often see on rooftops. Sharp eye doesn't begin to cut. Damn! 
damn. That burp almost fucking blew a hole in my chest. Sharp eye doesn't even begin to cut it. I'm surprised. You really are an archer. Archer. You really are an archer. Rin. Are you mocking me? Of course not. I just didn't take you for the bow and arrow type. My mistake. That's a misconception we'll have to address once we go home. With that, Archer goes quiet for a while. He must like the landscape from up here. He's probably considering the layout of the city. I shouldn't interrupt him while he's thinking. I step away from Archer and approach the edge of the rooftop. I jump off. All I can see from here are the lights below. Headlights flow through the streets. <laughs> and I can make people out. I can make out people on the way home from work. I can't tell what kind of cars they are or who exactly is walking. I can see them but not clearly. It's not unlike how I could tell someone was watching me earlier, even if I couldn't pinpoint them. At the very least, I know someone made their base in Shinto. I squint down towards the ground. There are seven masters in total. I don't know who they are or which servants are with them. At this point, every master is probably gathering intelligence on their rivals. Suddenly, I feel someone's eyes on me. There's no reaction from my command spell. I simply sense that someone else is looking at me. Down there? I peer down. People are walking on the street, but one in particular is gazing up at me as if staring at the Tsukihime moon. I'm not sure exactly who that is. I can't say for certain, yet I never know exactly who. I can't believe that guy. What's he doing out this late? Have you found an enemy, Rin? Archer calls out to me. Maybe he can make out my rising hostility. Not really. It's just someone I know. A normal person who has nothing to do with us. Unable to clamp it down, I, irritated, I, irrit I irritably snapped back at him and step away from the roof's edge. He couldn't have seen me from the ground. I'm sure it was just a coincidence. I hadn't given myself away. And yet, my maid side is screaming at me for allowing an eyewitness to catch sight of me. By the time I get back to Miyama, it's 9 p.m. Unlike Shinto, Miyama is mostly residential. At 9, there isn't really anyone outside, and the streets are as silent as if it's much later at night. That's it for the tour. Did you get a good look at the city? Mm. Yeah, I understand the layout. I'll pick up more details along the way. And we're done for today. I'm still not feeling great, so I'm going home to rest. I start up the hill at a relaxed pace when I notice someone up ahead. Is that Sakura? Uh-oh. Now would not be a good time to run into her. Rin, why are you hiding? Quiet! Uh, there's someone I know up ahead. I skipped school today, so I don't want her to see me. As I answer, I keep an eye on her. In the middle of the street, there's a first year student I know. And a foreigner I don't. They're talking. No, it looks more like he's trying to pick her up while well, she'd rather be anywhere else. Are you acquainted with the foreigner? No, I don't know who that is. There are a lot of European houses here, so maybe he's a tourist? Even as I finish the sentence, I'm mentally telling myself off for being so soft on that girl. Archer, is he human? Who knows? I can tell he has a human body, so that makes him no servant at least. Yeah, he isn't a master either, so maybe he's some lover's tiff? Though even I know that she isn't the, t the, the sort to get caught up in something like that. They're gone. The girl's going up the hill. The man. Oh, what the fuck? Jump scare? The blonde haired man descends via the street we came by. You can use this room. Any questions before I go to bed? 
Nana particular. It was wise of you to avoid a premature battle. You should let your strength recover tonight. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Make me that tea again. Once I'm back in my room, the fatigue watches over me. Oh yeah, I need to call Kide first. That annoying priest left me a message. By now, he's probably sent for a backup mage. It isn't my problem, but he is my legal guardian. I owe him a phone call at least. Phone, phone. I punch his number into the telephone. Before long, the fake priest picks up. Kide? It's me. I contracted a servant yesterday so you can register me as a master now. There's a brief pause. Kide's silence is deafening. I can feel its weight even through the earpiece. Understood. What will you do next? Will you stop by? I have something for you from your parents. They asked me to pass it to you. They asked me to pass it on to you if you ever became a master before adulthood. Oh, are you talking about father's will? I already decrypted that. I'll drop by the church if I feel like it. Bye. Wait, Rin. Now that you are a master, I hang up before he finishes. Shut your ass up! I don't want to hear you talk! If I have to listen to Kirei's nagging while I'm this tired, I have a feeling my magical energy would drain instead of recover. Alright, I should get ready. I should be ready. All that's left is to sleep. Once I open my eyes, it'll be a brand new day. And then I hear gunshots outside! And a car crashes into my front door! And Goku pulls up and throws a spirit bomb at fucking Archer! Ten years ago, my father fought as a mage in a holy grail war and got his ass whooped. Now it's my turn to risk it off with the same prize. Oh, fuck. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll read them all, tap into the next one. Make sure you share the video, too. I don't be saying that, but, like, should I start saying that? Should I, should I find a way to incorporate that into my intro? Like, share the video? I, I feel like I, li I like my outro how it is. But I hit 1,000 for the first time on my channel. Not the first time. Uh, well, a couple years ago, I think shortly after Cold War came out, I made a video, dumbass, short, stupid video. That video blew up and got like, you know, a thousand views. I fucking hate that video. I actually hate that video. I don't even count it as one of my videos, for real. So I'm not even counting that. Like, that video gave me so much fucking like self-doubt because this video where I don't show my face, I don't do my voice, I don't give commentary, I don't make jokes, and it's short, it's just so much more popular than all the videos I put actual effort into. So, and that was, that's been, that's been eating at me for a long time, I'm not gonna lie. So for a video like this, for a game that I wasn't even sure would even do well on my, ch on my channel, a game that I wasn't even sure would do well with my type of humor or commentary in a community I wasn't even sure would like would even fuck with a nigga like me like entering in like for a video like that to overtake that bullshit video that I hate so much that meant so much to me like seriously y'all don't understand like it actually it dead ass means so fucking much to me I I was I went to sleep so satisfied and happy when I saw how close it was to a thousand. My eyes was hurting. I was like, my, my eyes was in pain from all the recording and editing I did yesterday. I was so tired and exhausted from like just doing shit yesterday. But I went to sleep so fucking happy because I knew I was gonna wake up to a thousand. And that made me so fucking happy. And I'm inching ever closer to a thousand subscribers too. And all the comments of people like, like, the comments y'all leave, I, I know I say it every episode, y'all probably think I'm fucking around, but like, I, I like every comment, literally, I leave a like on every comment, 
I reply to every comment that I'm able to reply to. Like if it's something that I can reply to, I'll reply to. I read all your comments. These comments are quite literally like they make me so fucking happy. Like they make me so fucking happy. I don't understand. It makes me so happy seeing y'all comments. And like just seeing fuck. I put out a community post already, but like I gotta say it again, like I dead ass like wanted to cry when I saw this shit. Like even when I woke up, I was doing everything I could to avoid even looking at the fucking video because I just knew the second I saw it, I, like I would just get so fucking excited, so hyped, so happy. Like I was scared that I would like actually break down and cry type shit. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, like it's not even that big, it's just a thousand views. You know, like most people have less subscribers than me and they rake in like 3,000 at a time. But like, seriously, this is, this feels like such an achievement for me. Like, seriously. But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep on with this. Like, all I can really say is like, thank you to the fake community, the tight moon community. Thank you to my community, the people that watch my videos and, you know, tapped into it. Thank you to everybody that liked and shared and commented. Like for real, man, like thank you to my friends who like I be talking to and they give me advice and shit on what I can do. Like that thumbnail, I wasn't sure about that thumbnail. I legit did not think that thumbnail was good. But like I sent it to some of my friends and they were like, yo, I like the thumbnail, it's hard. It, like, it, cap it, it encapsulates like what the video is about really well. And the most of the video is really just about the glitches. Cause that's the, that you know, that's the, that's the bringing in point. So, you know, like, just like those people. I was talking to one of my friends, Toro Cat. Um, she be on Twitch and Twitter and shit. I was just talking to her earlier and telling her about it. Like, had an hour long conversation and that whole talk, like, like, this, it's just get, this just gives me so much fucking motivation. Like, th like this shit makes me want to get back on P5. Like, like, if, if, hey man, like, if you, if you, if you seen my P5 videos, y'all know how I've been feeling about that damn game. Like, I really do not want to touch that shit. But like, this is giving me the motivation to just bite the bullet and touch it again. Just touch the game again, you know? And just, and, and just make the best content I can make out of that bullshit. No offense to Persona 5 lovers. It's a good game, but after playing Persona 4 and Persona 3, like it kind of, it kind of feels like watching the anime of a visual novel after playing the visual novel, you know? So not that I would know what that feels like. I mean, I'm gonna be real. After reading the Higurashi manga, and Higurashi is my favorite anime. After reading the Higurashi manga, the anime just looks like straight ass to me now. <laughs> like on some real shit. I can't imagine what reading the visual novel would do to my perception of the anime. And it's my favorite anime. But that's enough yip yap chit chat from your boy Ken Zack. Peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. And like, yo. I really love and appreciate y'all, seriously. I know I say it all the time, but like, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I love and appreciate all of y'all. Like, real shit, dead ass. No, no, like, no, no kizzy, no kizzy cap, but, but peace out, I love y'all. Bye-bye. Oh shit, I almost forgot. I'm uploading the first episode of Tsukihime today. It's gonna be later on in the day. Hopefully around five, if everything goes right. It'll be around five, if everything goes right. And if everything goes right, I'm gonna I'm have this I'm gonna have this come out around maybe two or three. But peace out, I love y'all. Officially, goodbye. <laughs>